Welcome to this Icon Motion Capture tutorial. In this video, we are going to answer the question, how do I add a device into Nexus as a generic analog? We will be covering how to add an output for your device and adding and editing channels for your analog device. This will allow you to add a bare wire or other analog device into Nexus, such as a force transducer or center of pressure walkway, and capture data with that device in conjunction with your other motion capture. To connect a device as a generic analog in Vicon Nexus, you will need a Vicon Lock Lab unit and either a wide Mueller connector, which is provided by Vicon and your bare wire analog device, or a lock to BNC OmniMate cable and your analog device. You will need to know the pin configuration for both the device you are integrating and how it integrates with the lock. If your device requires a specific pin order, please contact the manufacturer or refer to their documentation. For more information regarding how to wire a wide Mueller device, please see our System Setup How-To video on attaching analog cables to a lock lamp. To add a generic analog device within Nexus, navigate to the Systems tab in the Resource pane. Right-click on Devices, then select Add Analog Device. Select Add Generic Analog. The source refers to the Lock Lab or Lock Plus device that you've connected your analog devices to. From the drop down list, select the correct one from the available analog option cards detected in your Vicon system architecture. Note that for each generic analog device, you can change the name of the device within the software. To add an output, right click on Generic Analog and add the output that you are interested in. While there are many outputs to choose from, in this video we will only be showing an electric potential example. The workflow will be the same if you select any other output. Once you have added the output you are interested in, expand the arrow to the left of the generic analog heading, right-click on the new output, and add the number of components. For each component, you will need to change the general properties, such as the name and scaling factor. The scaling factor is a value that gets multiplied by the incoming voltage to compute its real-world value. The scaling factor converts that voltage to the unit of the output. If a scaling factor is needed, it must be known beforehand. For each component, you need to change the source information. The pin corresponds to the analog input connectors from the lock. The gain you set depends on the expected gain of your device. The gain in volts represents the expected voltage range of incoming signal. Depending on the gain setting, the incoming signal would be amplified by 1.25, 2.5, 5, or 10 volts prior to being sampled by the lock. The actual amplifications would correspond to 8, 4, 2, and unity, respectively. The gain would then be factored out prior to displaying or recording the data. This maximizes the effective resolution of the sampling. It is important that the gain value is greater or equal to the maximum signal level for your device. Otherwise, you will experience clipping. Vicon follows the base unit scheme for each device type. If your scale factor converts the voltage to a different unit, then the data will be correct when displayed on a graph in Nexus, but the graph units will not be correct. In this section, we will go over how to set a zero level. To do this, Right-click on the generic analog device you created, and click Zero Level. This process ensures that any component outputs are reported relative to its nominal value measured at rest. In summary, we showed you how to add a generic analog device and how the different properties can influence the quality of the output. Thank you for watching this video. As always, if you have any questions, you can contact us at support at vicon.com.